Here is the second part of the lecture. In this part, we shall discuss about materials for wind turbine blades. Here are represented two pie charts explaining the cumulative installed capacity of global wind energy market shares by different countries. The global wind energy market increased by 15.6% in 2015 and is expected to grow and reach 703.4 gigawatt by 2020. The second pie chart shows the share of different kinds of materials employed in the construction and production of wind turbine blades. A report published in January 2015 from industry consultants AMI Consulting calculates that global demand for materials in the production of wind turbine blades grew by over 10% per annum in the last three years. In this slide is listed a collection of terminologies which define strength of materials. These are compressive strength, tensional strength, compressional stress, shear stress, stiffness, and tensile properties. Compressive strength or compression strength is the capacity of a material or structure to withstand loads tending to reduce size as opposed to tensile strength which withstands loads tending to elongate. In other words, compressive strength resists compression being pushed together, whereas tensile strength resists tension being pulled apart. In the study of strength of materials, tensile strength, compressive strength and shear strength can be analyzed independently. Stiffness is expressed by the Young's modulus of the material, basically the relationship between force and deformation. In general, blades are very flexible, stronger in the flap-wise direction and weaker in the edge-wise direction. And here is the reason for the use of composite materials. For a given Young modulus, the material with the lower density is the composite resin plus glass fiber. We can see graphically this relationship in a type of graphic called HP plot. In this plot, Young's modulus versus density plot of different materials have been shown. Resistance against fatigue loads requires a high fracture toughness per unit density, eliminating ceramics and living candidate materials such as wood and composites. The merit index for beam deflection minimize mass for a given deflection is given by the equations shown here. During the first glorious pioneering years of wind energy, there had been extensive usage of wood, steel, and aluminum and other materials. In the recent years, there is a predominance in the use of composite materials for the blades for the wind turbines. Nowadays, the popular materials for turbine blades are fiber reinforced polymers or FRPS, the commonly used fiber reinforcements are glass and carbon because these are lightweight and possess excellent mechanical properties. Apart from these, polymer matrix such as unsaturated polyesters and vinyl esters and epoxies are also used. And composite materials are the very popular nowadays. Here is the anatomy of a typical wind turbine blade shown in the picture. 
A typical wind turbine blade cross section with all of its interior components broken down into different layers and materials is depicted in this figure. The shear web of the wind blade can be observed along with both spar caps positioned at either end of the shear web. Knowing that the structural internal profile of a blade will determine its strength and stiffness parameters under different loading modes. Balsa wood or polymer foam are the core materials for both the shear web and shell of the blade. The shell itself is composed of resin, fiber, laminate, a balsa wood core and structural adhesives. Carbon fibers can be drawn from a much cheaper material called lignin. Lignin is a natural polymer. It is derived from plants and roots and is very low cost. Carbon fibers der derived from lignin involves production steps, fiber spinning, thermostabilization, and carbonization. There had been a continuous quest for picking up a better material and comparing glass fiber versus carbon fiber. Glass fiber has adequate strength, possess high failure strain, high density and is a low cost material. On the other hand, carbon fiber is a superior mechanical property holding material and it has low density but the cost is high. Before 2019, many wind turbine blades had been made of fiberglass with designs that only provided a service lifetime of 10 to 20 years. Given the available technology, as of February 2018, there was no market for recycling of these old blades and they are commonly disposed of in the landfills. Because blades are designed to be hollow, they take up the large volume compared to their mass. Landfill operators have therefore started requiring operators to crush the blades before they could be landfilled. The stiffness of the composite is defined by the stiffness of the fiber and their volume content. Typically, e-glass fibers are used as the main re reinforcement in the composites. Typically, the glass epoxy compos composites for wind turbine blades contain up to 75% glass by weight. This increases the stiffness, tensile and compression strength. A promising composite material is glass fiber with modified compositions like S-glass, R-glass, etc. Carbon fibers has more tensile strength, higher stiffness and lower density than glass fiber. An ideal candidate for these properties is the spar cap, a structural element of a blade which experiences high tensile loading. A 100 meter glass fiber blade could weigh up to 50 metric tons while using carbon fiber in this spar saves 20% to 30% weight, about 15 metric tons. However, because carbon fiber is 10 times more expensive, glass fiber is still dominant. Here is the comparison of material properties of different kind of fibers. Glass fibers are most widely used for turbine blades and these are cheapest, whereas carbon fibers offer best performance but are little expensive. Mattress system in the advanced blade materials are the resins. These are also binders. These provide a medium for binding and holding the reinforcements into a single object. It protects the reinforcement from environmental degradation and serves to transfer load from one to the other medium. It provides finish, color, durability and 
other functional properties required for the final product. The commonly known resin materials are epoxy, vinyl esters and polyesters. Some of the structures have been shown here. Epoxy resins have a well established record in a wide range of composite parts, structures and concrete repair. A major benefit of epoxy resins over unsaturated polyester resins is their lower shrinkage and better mechanical strength. Epoxies are used primarily for fabricating high performance composers with superior mechanical properties, resistance to corrosive liquids and environments, superior electrical properties, good performance and elevated temperatures. It also provides good adhesion to the substrate or a combination of these benefits. Epoxy resins do not however have particularly good UV resistance. The viscosity of epoxy is much higher than most polyester resins. It also requires a post cure at elevated heat temperatures to obtain ultimate mechanical properties making epoxies more difficult to use. However, epoxies emit little odor as compared to other polyesters. Here are some more chemical structures of epoxy hardeners. These are aliphatic amines, aromatic amines, and acid anhydrides. Here is the step growth gelation of a polymer network is shown. The first step, the thermoset cure starting with two part monomer is shown. In the next step, the process proceeds by linear growth and branching. This is followed by continued formation of gel but incompletely cured. In the final step, the process ends with a fully cured polymer network. Fiber reinforced plastic, FRP, also called fiber reinforced polymer or fiber reinforced plastic is a composite material made of a polymer matrix reinforced with fibers. The fibers are usually glass in fiberglass, carbon in carbon fiber reinforced polymer, a ramid or basalt. Rarely other fibers such as paper, wood or asbestos have been used. The polymer is usually an epoxy, vinyl ester or polyester thermosetting plastic, though phenol formaldehyde resins are still in use. Here in the graph is shown the share of composite components versus number of years in progress. The CFRP, also called carbon fiber reinforced polymer plastic thermoplastics are in popular use. Other than that, GFRP, graphite fiber reinforced polymer is the next favorite material. These materials offer a specific strength and stiffness, part reduction and multifunctional in usage. Here some of the properties of composite materials are listed. These are stiffness, static strength, fatigue properties and damage tolerance. In the pictures we can see the first picture the damage models observed in composite aeroshell and in the second picture internal box beam when a wind turbine blade was tested to failure is shown. Stiffness is expressed by the Young's modulus of the material, basically the relationship between force and deformation. In general, blades are very flexible, stronger in the flap was direction and weaker in the edgewise direction. 
and there is the reason for the use of composite materials. For a given Young's modulus, the material with the lower density is the composite, resin plus glass fiber. In general, the two design drivers are weight and stiffness. A blade should be as light as possible for a variety of reasons. To lower the gravity-induced fatigue loads, to be easily transported and installed, to have a better performance. However, it should also be stiff, that is rigid, for several other reasons. To withstand loads, both wind load and gravity loads are considered. Wind loads are function of wind speed and length of the blade and increase from the root of the tip to the blade. Gravity loads are function of the material density. To prevent collision between the blades and the tower under extreme wind. To prevent instability, local or global buckling, maintaining its shape. For these reasons, blade designers try to minimize the mass of assigned stiffness levels. It is to find a balance between aerodynamic and structural refinements. So we want less weight, that is lower density and more stiffness. Here is the comparison of composite properties from various fibers. Instead of making wind turbine blade reinforcements from pure glass or pure carbon, hybrid designs trade weight for cost. For example, for an 8 meter blade, a full replacement by carbon fiber would save 80% of the weight but increase the cost by 150% while a 30% replacement would save 50% of the weight and increase the cost by 90%. Hybrid reinforcement materials include e-glass carbon, e-glass aramid. The current longest blade by LM wind power is made up of carbon glass hybrid composites. More research is needed about the optimal composition of the material. Additionally, some small amount such as 0.5 weight percent of nano enforcement of carbon nanotubes or nano clay in the polymer matrix of the composite fiber sizing or interlaminar layers can improve the fatigue resistance of the material. Additionally, the shear or compressive strength and fracture toughness of the composite can improve by 30% to 80%. Research have also shown that incorporating small amounts of carbon nanotubes can increase the lifetime up to 1500%. Here in the picture is shown ceramic mold used to make 13 meter wind turbine blades. The picture below shows 13 meter wind turbine blades made using epoxy powder. In the table, there are three kinds of composite materials shown in comparison in view of material properties, that is tensile strength, compressive strength, and tensile modulus. The materials are infused composites, pre and powder material. The main loads on the blades are generated by wind and by gravity. Wind loads mainly induce both flapwise and edgewise bending. These loads have both a static and a dynamic component, that is, variation in the wind speed and natural wind shear that induce fatigue on the blade material. Gravity loads mainly induce edgewise bending when the blade is horizontal. The rotation of the blades cause alternating edgewise bending and thus fatigue of the material occurs. Keeping in mind the proper material properties, the appropriate material has to be chosen to construct the wind turbine blades. The growth of the blade mass with blade length is shown below. 
the growth rate of mass blade with length has been reducing in the past decades the key drivers for reduction is improved manufacturing processes introduction of new materials and more efficient use of materials and improved structural configurations in this regard for smaller blade length hand lay up glass fiber polyester material was considered to be an appropriate material with increased blade length up to 45 meters resin infusion glass fiber polyester composite material showed a promising results for longer length of blades up to 65 and longer the prepegs carbon glass fiber epoxy composite materials are showing good promise now we shall see some of the basic structures of the blade of a wind turbine here the cross section of a blade has been shown the cross section of a blade consists essentially of outer shell which ensures the stability of the aerodynamic shape and internal structural support of the outer shells that is longitudinal beam or the webs next main component of a wind blade inside is the main spar here is shown the cross section concepts of the main spar the two aero shells are bonded to a load carrying spar beam that is also called the box beam the main spar and the wing shells are manufactured separately and joined in a separate bonding process Another important internal structure is the internal stiffeners. Here is the cross section concept of internal stiffeners has been shown. The two aero shells are bonded to two or more internal webs or called stiffeners. The wing shells are manufactured with relatively thick monolithic composite laminates called spar caps. further the entire blade structure including internal web stiffeners is manufactured in one single process and no secondary bonding here the comparison of strength in terms of tensile strength and stiffness in terms of tensile modulus of different polymer resins employed in the construction of wind turbine blades have been shown these resins are polyester vinyl ester and epoxy the results show that a post curing of 5 hours at 80 degrees celsius improves the property of the materials except for the tensile modulus in the case of epoxy resins One of the main problem to the wind turbine blades is the degradation of resin from water ingress. The absorption of water affects the resin and the resin fiber interface leading to gradual reduction of mechanical properties as shown here. The stre strength of the epoxy fibers is retained up to 85% and polymer up to 65% only after soaking. in water at 100 degrees celsius here in this graph the comparison of results of metal properties in terms of tensile stress by strain has been shown 
A composite material consists of two or more materials combined to obtain properties different from those of individual materials. The reinforcement fibers are employed to add strength and stiffness to the final product, whereas matrix holds and protects the fibers and distributes the load. The polymer matrix composite, PMC, materials are typically used in the wind turbines are fiber, composite and the resin. Typical reinforcement used in composite materials are generally stiff, strong and lightweight fibers such as glass fibers which offer good specific strength, low specific stiffness and relatively inexpensive in the cost. On the other hand, carbon fibers possess high specific strength and stiffness and are expensive. The aramid fibers are hygroscopic. They offer low compression strength and the research is still to gather more data on fating. Here in the table, the properties of reinforcing fibers have been compared. These are tensile strength, Young's modulus, density and specific stiffness. The specific stiffness of HS carbon, IM carbon, UHM carbon, E glass and S glass are quite notable. Here in this graphical expression, the comparative fiber cost have been shown. The comparison of fiber cost for unidirectional fabrics of 300 grams per meter square is highest for IM carbon and lowest for E glass. Here, the tensile and compressive properties of unidirectional composites have been shown. The IM carbon followed by HS carbon, Kevlar, S glass and E glass material properties show that being expensive, the IM carbons offer greater and better material properties. Here in this slide, the reinforcement architecture and basic structural configuration used in the blades have been shown in brief. The common geometries of the fibrous reinforcement include continuous or chopped strand mat system as shown in the picture and unidirectional fiber arrangement to form a structure and fabric type reinforcement in two methods namely woven fabrics and stitch bonded non grip fabrics are popular in usage. The monolithic laminates consist of different layers of multi-directional fabric or unidirectional fabrics. The sandwich composites consist of a low density core between thin faces skins of composite materials. These are polymeric PVC, PET, PMI foams with density in the range 40 to 200 kg per meter cube. The skin core skin system makes a sandwich structure. In the sandwich composites, the insertion of a core increases the thickness of the structure and thus Flexural stiffness and strength without increasing its weight can be seen here. The skins carry the tensile and the compressive loads, whereas the core carry the shear load. The weight bending stiff and bending strength comparison of different thickness of the core has been shown below.
the dominant manufacturing techniques for composite blades are wet hand lay up laminating technique filament winding resin infusion and prepeg methods are popular we shall see this one by one In the wet hand layup laminating technique, the dry fiber material, mats, fabrics, or unidirectional tapes are laid in various layers into the mold of the component. The layers are then impregnated with resin and cured at room or higher temperatures, approximately 70 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius for epoxy resins specifically. The main advantages of this method is production of complex shapes is possible and fiber can be oriented in the preferred directions as required. On the other hand, the disadvantages are the process is labor extensive and time consuming. That is, most of the steps are handmade. The large amount of voids and defects are a side effect of this method and low fiber fraction is another disadvantage. In the filament winding method, the fibers are passed through a resin bath and then wound into a rotating mandrel. The process is primarily used for cylindrical components but can be adapted for blade manufacturing as shown in the picture. The main advantages of this method is the process can be carried out in an automatic way. On the other hand, the different mandrels must be used to gradually build the airfoil. And another disadvantage is Fibers cannot be easily oriented along the axis of the blade in zero's direction. In the resin infusion technique, the dry fiber, mats, fabrics or unidirectional tapes are placed in a mold and encapsulated in a vacuum bag. Liquid resin is then pulled through the reinforcement by vacuum and allowed to cure at room or higher temperature. The key issues for final quality of resin infusion are improvement of fiber impregnation to avoid regions with dry fibers and reduction of the voids. The possible ways to tackle these issues are selection of appropriate fiber, coating sizing and improve the wettability of the material. Use of low viscosity resins at room or moderate temperatures to improve wettability and reduce the process time for large components is required. Use of fiber fabrics with special architecture or special resin distribution messes to facilitate flow of the resin is an another requirement. The improvement of resin flow optimal placement of inlet and outlet lines for resin by simulation of the flow and data from sensors is another requirement. The main advantages of this process is large components can be made in a single step. The method is clean and safe. The final material quality is good and there is a potential for automation of the method. The main disadvantages on the other hand are relatively complicated process especially for large components and low viscosity resins should be used in this process to obtain a good mechanical property. Prepeg is pre-impregnated composite fibers where a thermoset polymer matrix material such as epoxy is already present. In the pre-peg technology, the pre-peg 
tapes consist of fiber fabrics pre-impregnated with a resin that is not fully cured. The pre-pegs are laid up onto the mold surface, vacuum bag and then heated. The pressure required to consolidate the stacked layers of pre-pegs is achieved by vacuum. Process temperatures range between 70 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. The method of making wind blades are shown in the picture. The main advantages of this method is high fiber ratio and low word content. Consistent material properties can be obtained by this method. The method is easily controlled and gives an opportunity to align the fiber materials in design, desired manner. Large components can be made in a single step is an another advantage of this method. The method is clean and safe. On the other hand, the disadvantages are the cost of the prepeg material is too high. Tooling must withstand process temperature and it is difficult to correctly cure thick laminates temperature not uniform though through the thickness. Although the methods of manufacturing the wind turbine blade showed many interesting results out of extensive research. However, there are typical manufacturing defects which remain and need to be removed. These are wires and dry zones in the material, delaminations, bonding defects, foreign intrusions, fiber waviness and wrinkles. These material defects are to be removed to make and obtain a final product with desired qualities. After manufacturing of the material or for the wind turbine blades, the material is tested by idealized stress strain curve analysis. Here in the graph is shown different points which define different properties of the material to be considered. The main failure modes in composite materials, especially for composite laminates, are fiber failure, matrix failure, fiber matrix debonding, interlaminar failure or delamination, and buckling instability. Whereas the main failure modes in composite sandwiches are core failure or crushing core face sheet deponding. The main modes of fiber failure have been shown here pictorially. The cluster of fiber breaks under tension is shown above. The fibers have brittle structure. Failures occur by unstable growth of a cluster of adjacent broken fibers. In the second picture, the compression failure is shown. The fiber failure initiated by instability, buckling, followed by kinking. The matrix failure is controlled by tensile or compressive stresses perpendicular to the fiber direction and by shear stresses. Here in the picture is shown the tension loading involved failure of the matrix perpendicular to the tensile load direction and compression loading involving failure of the matrix along inclined planes whereas out of the plane shear loading involves failure of the matrix along a 45 degree plane. Delamination or interlaminar failure is the separation between adjacent piles due to normal through thickness in jet direction or shear stresses at the interface. It is one of the most common failure processes in laminates because of the low through thickness strength of laminates. Delaminations are typically induced in composite laminates during service by out of plane loads impacts or by in plane loads in the presence of strain concentrations such as at 
discontinuities, plaque drops, wrinkles, material and geometric transitions or existing defects. Delamination or interlaminar failure may propagate under static or cyclic loads with three different propagation modes, namely opening mode, sliding mode and tear mode. Growth of delamination may be modeled with a fracture mechanics approach, assuming that the crack propagates when the energy available, that is strain energy release rate, reaches the fracture energy of the material. Specific FE approaches include the VCC technique or use of interface elements implementing a cohesive law of fracture. On the other hand, buckling is a mode of collapse during under compression, which is characterized by the appearance at a critical applied load of out of plane bending deflections corresponding to a new equilibrium configuration. Buckling can significantly reduce the compressive strength and stiffness of composite structures and can lead to the development of the other failure modes, that is, fiber failure. The failure modes in sandwich structures show typical damage modes, in addition to damage in the composite skins. These occur by core crushing or laminate fracture due to local loads. Failure shear in the core, global or shear buckling, face buckling and face core debonding plus buckling. The buckling of the delaminated composites can be induced in delaminated composite structures depending on the thickness of the laminate and on the size and depth location of the delamination. Buckling load is reduced in the presence of delamination. Buckling of piles due to buckling results in higher stresses and may be promoted to the growth of the delamination. Here in the picture is shown local buckling, global buckling and mixed buckling. Here in the picture, typical failure modes in blades, especially in the main spar part and wing shell has been shown. The most critical failure modes involve interface failure, which include delamination, skin core debonding and matrix cracking. On the other hand, in the wing shell part, it occur via Skin adhesive debonding, joint failure, delamination and matrix cracking, and joint failure at the edges. Here, the structural comparison of blade with on axis laminates and blade with bent twist off axis laminates have been shown. In the blade with on axis laminates, the symmetry axis of the composite is aligned with the blade axis and extension of the laminates does not induce shear forces. The blade does not twist while bending. On the other hand, in the bent twist blade with off axis laminates, the symmetry axis of the composite is not aligned with the blade axis. And as we can see in the picture, the extension of the laminates induce shear forces and generate torsion. The blade twists while bending. The main challenge in the production of wind energy is the recycling of the blade materials. A challenge in recycling blades is related to the composite material which is made of a thermosetting matrix and glass fibers or a combination of glass and carbon fibers. Thermosetting matrix cannot be remolded to form new composites. So the options are either to send the blade to landfill or reuse the blade and the composite material elements found in the blade or to transform the composite material into the new source of material. 
In Germany, wind turbine blades are commonly and commercially recycled as part of an alternative fuel mix for a cement factory. In the USA, the town of Casper, Wyoming has buried 1,000 non-recyclable blades in its landfill site, earning $675,000 for the town. It pointed out that wind farm waste is less toxic than other garbage. Wind turbine blades represent a vanishingly small fraction of overall waste in the USA, according to the American Wind Energy Association. Now we shall continue to the part 3 of this lecture.